Good morning. I have a little bit of that head going on. But um, I was just getting ready to take my um, morning medications. And that prompted me to um, make this video. I'm going to talk about two things today. I'm going to talk about um, the stick. And I'm going to talk about the um, treatment that I began last Friday. Okay. So, jumping right in. This is what I call the stick. Okay. And um, this is what I was explaining that I need to use when I walk. Okay. Um, this is the stick. And... Um, Recently, I was challenged by a family member as to whether or not I needed to use the stick or not. Um, the, the, to quote what the statement is made, you seem to be getting around easy without it. So what I have learned to do and what my physical therapist is 100% against is I've learned to furniture walk. And what that means is when I maneuver myself around my apartment, which is very small, I'm constantly holding on to something as I go. The back of the couch, the stovetop, the side of the refrigerator. Um, you get the picture. When I was at... Um, the uh, a relative's house uh, last week. I was um, getting around her house pretty good, and um, I can walk ten steps without any assistance ninety percent of the time. It's when I go out and I am having to do a lot of walking um it's uh there's nothing really to hold on to as I go that's when I really need the stick um multiple sclerosis is a very unpredictable disease and because of that the disabilities that can come from it can be unpredictable as well. And I have days where I feel fantastic. I feel strong. Um, and then I have days where I can't make it to the bathroom. Um, those days where I'm not able to do um, a lot of things without great, great effort are the majority of my days. Even pushing a vacuum cleaner takes everything out of me because I just don't have the upper body strength anymore. It's just not there. So that's a little bit about the stick. Um and why I use it and other times I don't. Um, I think, you know, generally across the board, most people just don't understand because they're only going on what they see. So if you see me walking, say, from a dining room table to the kitchen, and it's about 12 steps and I do it without doing the, I call it the Texas two step where I'm losing my balance. Um, may question, well, why are you using the crutch then? It's a whole different ball game when I am out and about uneven terrain, unfamiliar terrain, um, nothing to hold on to. And, um, I've had people, you know, see me walk and a very, very short distance. And I go, but 
like do, 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 like I lose my balance. It's I mean it just happens and and I don't know when it's going to happen. I just know that it does happen. So um when I became a patient of the um multiple sclerosis clinic at Penn State Hershey um during all the testing that I had to go through over the course of a few months I learned about the treatments that are now available and I got incredibly excited and um out of all the treatments that were available three were potential matches for me and it end, it ended up being that only one I was a candidate for and that is called um abagio now this is a uh disease modifying treatment it's a really small pill that I take once a day and it is meant to stop my disease progression right here and right now. So the disabilities that I have won't get worse. And then it's meant to lighten the lesion load on my brain and um, prevent disease progression. So super excited, super excited about it. Um, I had to, there's a process to be able to get the Abagio and um, I, I went through that process with my doctor. She worked very hard and um, I was approved and I was, I got the uh, phone call that I was approved last Wednesday and Friday my medicine was here. Um, this medication, I looked up the good RX to see if there was discount, like what the discount for this medication would be. And the good RX coupon will give you this medication, Abagio for $7,891 for 30 pills. Now I completely understand why there is an approval process and uh, criteria that needs to be met once again to um, start treatment with Abagio because initially I was denied and the uh, list of the criteria that they said I didn't meet was, I absolutely did meet it 100%. And my doctor's office swooped right on top of that with an appeal and all kinds of documented evidence, uh, proof, and um, said they wanted an expedited appeal, which meant I would get an answer within 72 hours. And I did. And it was Wednesday. And uh, Wednesday, like I said, was the call that I was approved. So, um, Abagio comes with side effects. And the more I was reading about this treatment, there were a few doctors that um, coined this medication as a mild chemo. It's not categorized as a mild chemo. It's just been referred to as a mild chemo. So when the medicine came on Friday, I opened up the bottle and I was holding the pill in my hand and I was going, should I or shouldn't I, should I or shouldn't I, like I got scared. And then I said, I should. And I took the medicine and all day I never felt any different than I do any other day. And Saturday the same, Sunday the same. Um, yesterday, though, um, I started to have nausea. And um, 
I am assigned an Abagio nurse and I spoke with her and she said to try to change when I take it because um, I was taking it with my morning pills and she said because it could be taken any time of the day with or without food. So when I have lunch or dinner, that's when I'm going to take the Abagio and see if that helps. Um, one of the other side effects that I am afraid of um, is um, the lowering of my white blood cells because this medication is an immunosuppressant and I could make less white blood cells which will make it harder to fight off any kind of infection and you know, I could be around somebody with the common cold and it could very well turn into a deadly pneumonia for me. Um, so that's a fear of, and you know, some, some sort of infection. Um, there's a risk of a infection of the brain. And if I'm remembering correctly, Ashley had said that there was three reported cases of or four reported cases of a brain infection and no one died from it. So that's a, that's a fear. The other one is, um, Abagio can cause hair thinning or hair loss and or hair loss. It says, and if that's going to happen, it's going to happen within the first three months of treatment. And around the eighth month of treatment, the hair will start to grow back. And then it doesn't happen again. This medication is a for life medication. If I stop taking it, then my or, or MS starts to progress. So... That's a fear too. Um, not everybody who takes a Baggio experiences these side effects or experiences them in a severe um, way or experiences them at all. So each day that I take it, I don't know. You know, it's like venturing into the unknown. I don't know if... Um, you know, I'm going to get sick or I'm going to have this or I'm going to have that or I'm going to go to shampoo my hair and it's all going to be in the in the shower, you know. Um, and I'm sure over, over time those fears will subside. But right now, because it's so brand new, they're right in the front of my brain. Um, I also wanted to touch base on um, the word recognition problem that... Um, uh, MS patients have and basically what it means is um, I search I will search and search and search to find the right word to express myself and I have a difficult time grabbing the words so you've seen me kind of pause and sort of look off and I uh, I that's that's what's happening um there was something else i wanted to say i don't remember um okay so that'll be all for today um maybe later i always say maybe later oh no 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 i remembered um one of the one of my biggest obstacles with my MS is the fatigue. And I posted a, um, a picture with a quote from a, from a PhD who described MS fatigue. And I couldn't have said it any better myself. And she referred to it as bone crushing and, and it certainly is. And, um, it, it, it interferes in my life and it 
causes me not to do um, things that I want to do in my apartment, like do my own laundry or wash a dish. Um, it has caused me in the past to cancel plans. So I've been telling my neurologist about, you know, the fatigue and, you know, that I, I, I at this point, I don't know what, what I can do. Getting a good night's sleep doesn't help. You know, eating all my vegetables doesn't help. Taking B vitamins doesn't help. So she said to me uh, last week when I had my appointment that there's um, help for, for MS fatigue. And I had no idea. I just didn't know. And she said, there's medications we can try. And I got so excited. And um, I was like, I didn't even, I says, well, I didn't even know there was medications for MS fatigue. She's like, yeah. She said, this has been going on a long time with you. So let's give something a try. And I was right on there. So she uh, prescribed a medication called Amanadine. And it's a first line choice. And, um, I, it's prescribed to take it once or twice a day, but once didn't do anything for me. So I've been doing it twice a day. I take it in the morning and then I take it before two, because if I take it after two, I can't, I, it, it interrupts my sleep and that's a whole other issue. I mean, I have a sleep specialist too, because of my insomnia. So believe me, I don't want any help. <laughs> So, so far though, I haven't had a positive response. Um, and I'm really bummed out about it because I was so hopeful that it, that, um, you know, the fatigue would, well, I, you know, in my heart, I wanted to just disappear. Not the case. Um, during the day, I have, uh, when I have my most energy is early morning, um, between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. And then after that, I start to putter out. So if I can't um, get to what I want to get to before 9 a.m., chances are it's not going to get, uh, I'm not going to get to it at all. So I'm going to continue to take the the amenadine. I don't know if it's a medication that needs to, you know, build up um, in your system f to get the benefit from it. But I'm going to keep ta taking it. And then I have an appointment with her in uh, six or eight weeks um, since I started Abagio and the amenadine. She wants to see how, how I'm doing at that point. So... If I'm still not getting any relief from the fatigue, you know, we'll reapproach it. And she said, if it didn't work, there's other medicines that, that we can try. And she said that a lot of her MS patients have had success with it. So that's why I was like so excited about it. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, Okay, so we talked about the stick. We talked about the um, the treatment, the um, the abagio treatment, and the fatigue treatment. Um, I have in my copy book um, things I want to talk about. I have to write everything down, including and one of the topics is the handy dandy notebook. <laughs> so I'll address maybe I'll address one of those. Uh, topics later on today and make another video or you know tomorrow is always another day so anyway thanks for watching I hope you're well till next time